Okay, first of all, sorry to make um, confusion. So in the slide of week one, I explained the convergence blade with this notation fx t minus fx star over g t is less than or equal to 1. We say g t is the learning rate. But in week 2, I explain the learning with uh, epsilon term. So here, fx t minus fx star less than or equal to epsilon. To satisfy this, how many iterations do we need? So we want to make some time t which depend on epsilon such that we have uh, this inequality. In both cases, smaller is better, right? But usually, this term is um, more right definition for run the convergence slate. Okay, so now let's compare three different convergence rates we have discussed in week two. The first case is L ellipsis continuous case was case okay so in that case we have result fx bar minus fx star less than or equal to r times l over square root capital t and here x bar is x1 plus of 2x capital T over capital T. So x bar is the empirical average over whole sequence of your update. But note that because we cannot guarantee x capital T is the best case among your update trajectory, even it is possible fx t minus fx star is greater than R L over square root capital T. So we cannot guarantee this convergence speed with the last time iterations. So here the all the convergence guarantee is for the case uh, where the function shape is um, some kind of worst case among the function that satisfy the ellipsis continuous property. Okay, so in this case, what is the learning rate G capital T? So here the learning rate G capital T is L L over square root capital T. What is the learning rate that make what is the convergence speed that make epsilon closeness to your optimal FX term? That depends on capital T, this value will be equal to r square l square over epsilon square to make epsilon distance to the fx star we have to learn r square times l square over epsilon square amount of update the second case is beta smooth case here we have fx capital T minus fx star less than or equal to beta times r square over capital T. So basically this is the learning rate, then the convergence rate, g capital T. And to make the epsilon distance to your optimal point fx star, we have um, this amount of iterations beta times r square over capital T amount of uh, iteration, we can guarantee epsilon closeness to the optimal point. When your function is alpha strongly convex and beta smooth, 
then we have this fx capital T minus fx star less than or equal to beta over 2 1 minus alpha over beta for t r square so here this is gt okay and how many iteration we need to guarantee epsilon closeness to your optimal we need log 2 epsilon over beta r square over log 1 minus alpha over beta okay. so we have discussed three different uh, function assumptions in each case we analyze the convergence rate like this so now let's compare three different convergence rate. So here what we are really interested in is the case epsilon go to zero and t go to infinity. When epsilon go to zero, so here the most significant term is log epsilon. Because other terms are constant, it's fixed. Even if you change the epsilon, other values will be there without any change. So all the epsilon t value just controlled by log epsilon here in this case. So here we usually say the dependence with respect to epsilon is just a log epsilon and this is kind of learning speed or convergence speed of your gradient descent algorithm with one of beta step size when your objective function is alpha strongly convex and beta smooth. In this case, oh, sorry. In this case, the running speed just depends on one over epsilon. Although there is some other constant, again, this constant does not depend on epsilon, so which will remain constant. So to guarantee epsilon distance to your optimal point and as epsilon go to infinity how fastly we can convert to epsilon boundary we need some constants times 1 over epsilon number of iterations okay so we are really interested in the dependency to epsilon for the sufficient number of iteration to guarantee epsilon closeness right and also again, when t goes to infinity, what is the difference between your current solution and uh, fx star? That depends on, in this case, 1 over square root to capital T. Again, although there is another constant here, we are really interested in to understand the speed with respect to the total iteration time, capital T. Other constant term, just um, just side information. We we really don't care. Okay, so why this is important? Essentially, uh, imagine this case. We have currently epsilon is kind of equal to zero point one, and we want to make a better uh, result, like epsilon zero point zero one. So from 0.1 epsilon to 0.01 epsilon, how many iterations do we need to learn more? So we can say the answer from this learning rate. We, because we can understand the dependency to epsilon from here, we can say for this question. Okay, and also we can uh, make this uh, conclusion as well. So currently, we learn the gradient descent with thousand iterations, and we have some nice result. And we want to know, imagine we want to know the how much we can improve with the iteration, like a ten thousand. When we learn ten times more iteration, how much we can improve from the current point. So for this question, the the convergence rate gt value is enough so we know the dependence with, with respect to capital T so in this case we can improve 
as much as uh, scale, 1 over square root 10, we can improve. For this case, we can improve 1 over 10 amount. For this case, this is more special. We can uh, exponentially uh, better performance compared to other case. Okay, so, so that's why we usually say this is much, much faster than the other cases in general. In general, people really want to know and understand the, the convergence speed and behavior as epsilon go to infinity or t go to infinity. 